Hello everybody. This is a continuation of the series of playing D players, C players, B players, and A players and looking at the mistakes they make at each level. So in this game I have the white pieces and I open with D4. Pawn to D5, C4, E6, Knight to C3, Knight to F6, all developing moves towards the center, preparation for castling, etc. All that stuff you should already know. Bishop to g5, pinning the knight. And here, here's an interesting thing. As you may already know about me, I don't study openings. So I'm not always making the best opening moves. But I'm making playable moves, not losing moves in the opening because I'm following principle. So the game is always moving towards a win, a draw, or a loss. And as long as I'm not moving towards a loss, I'm satisfied. But more importantly, I'm moving towards something that I want to do, that I want to accomplish. I'm trying to increase the chances of my opponent making a mistake. And I'm trying to play the game according to the strategic imbalances that either I create or my opponent creates. And if you do that, you will be playing some known opening. Maybe not the absolute best opening or the best moves, but playable moves. Okay, he continues with, he pins my knight, e3. I have to defend this pawn so I can recapture if he takes. And I need to develop, I need to open up my bishop. He takes, I take. Was it a mistake for him to take? Probably not. Was it the best? Probably not. Knight to d7. I develop my knight. He castles. Now I swing in. Now here's a questionable move. Is it a losing move? Can I get away? I, I violated a principle. I move my knight twice. I'm hoping he might take the knight. I take, and then we mess up his kingside pawn structure, right? He'll probably push and I'll have to take. Um, but you notice the center is closed, which means you can actually get away with moving the same piece twice, all else being equal. So here we go. He chases my bishop. I take, hoping he will take with the queen and then I can mess up his pawn structure. If he doesn't, he takes with the bishop. I back off. And now here's a really interesting point during the game, because this is something that we all do and we all have done. He chases my bishop, yeah, because now he has the weak pawn and he's going to go after it. I run. He comes in. He's not losing yet, but he's weakened his king side now. And he wants to either mess up my pawn structure here or he wants to win this pawn. So I try to get the most out of it and I move my bishop here hoping he will chase me away and weaken his king side even more because my this will weaken this square if he chases me away. My queen can get in, check. There's an undefended pawn. I'll have some tempos. So he makes the big mistake now. Now I'm getting ahead in development. He wins a pawn, which is his compensation, but look what I gain. I'm going after this undefended pawn. His knight is away from his king protection. Now I have two pieces bearing down on his king side, and he has his bishop and knight developed. So suddenly now the development is kind of caught up. But if we look at the compensation, I think white is standing a lot better here. And that was mostly because of greed and not looking at your opponent's counterattack possibilities before you waste a whole tempo taking a piece or a pawn. You have to realize that. You waste a whole move and what are you giving up? He has an undefended knight. He's probably already lost because of these factors, but there's still play left in the game, and now he's gonna have to be very careful to make the absolute best moves, otherwise he's gonna lose more quickly. So he defends the pawn, which is something you might consider doing, but he needed to uh, prepare for the defense more because my attack continues. That's the other thing. You need to look at what's the next attacking move that your opponent's going to make. And I just immediately go for it. Right? I have my rook here and I want to try and mate him over here. And if he takes this way, I take with the rook. Threaten mate. Actually unstoppable at this point. He needed to probably chase my bishop back. Remember when your opponent is in your territory, my bishop is in his territory, 
All else being equal, eject them. He probably needed to do that long ago. Let's see when he could have done it. Um, yeah, he could have done it right now, and that would have been best. Because then I would have to move my bishop, most likely. I don't know. I'd have to look more to see if there's still some attack for white. But um, yeah, he needed to do it then. Now it's going to be too late, whatever he does. Okay, now it's way too late. I take, well, I th first I throw a check in. Um, he blocks. I take. This knight is useless because it's pinned. He takes back, and now it's just mate very quickly. Game over. Okay, in this next game, I play the white pieces again. These players are 1,200 to 1,400 rating. And in the video number one, I played the black pieces, in case anybody's wondering. Okay, I open with d4. He plays d5, c4, e6, knight to c3. Bishop pins. Queen harasses. Queen defends. Knight develops. His knight develops. I harass the bishop. I'm putting the question to the bishop. He takes. I take with the queen so as not to mess up my pawn structure. He slides in and attacks the queen. I back off. He castles. I want to develop my bishop somewhere, so I guess I'm going over here. And he plays f5, solidifying that knight in my territory. I don't like that. I take, opening up the file. So I'm going to open file here. And remember, I'm always looking for power moves, as you should be too, right? Power move number one, check. Power move number two, attack on the queen. Do you see the attack on the queen? A potential win of a pawn. He takes, and I hit his queen with the bishop. So I've got two attackers on this pawn. Can he save it? My queen's undefended, right? So he gains the tempo on my queen. Very good. If I take now, I could probably win the pawn. But... I want more, so I develop my rook. I don't know. Um, maybe going that way. I, I don't want to develop his knight, really. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not developed enough yet. I don't know. It would require a lot more calculation to see if I can get away with just winning that pawn, allowing him to develop his knight. I'm just very reluctant to do such things. You have to be very careful when you're allowing your opponent to develop. Uh, but if you can win a pawn, you win a pawn, then you put up with it, right? The poison pawn can not be so poison sometimes. Okay, queen takes, rook takes. Now he's got to defend the pawn, and he pushes. Okay, now, here's the thing. My main mission, as yours should be too, as you saw in the last game, you want to eject pieces out of your territory. So that knight, his knight on e4 here is something I want to get rid of. So that's a long-term goal. Now that's the other thing you got to realize when you're playing better players, you should know that, you know, all else being equal, that's the whole thing. You know, what matters most in a game, um, you should need to know that they're going to be working on that at some point. And if he had thought of that, then he would have avoided what happened to him. All right, I develop my bishop. He develops a castle. And he gets his knight to f6. Black's doing very well here, yeah? I played b4. I don't know now why. I mean, I'm solidifying it, but he, could have, he couldn't push anyway. So anyway, a wasted move, I think, at this point. Um, he plays bishop to d7. So now I'm going to work on my goal of getting his knight out of my territory. Bishop to e5, attacking his bishop. And now if I can get the bishop pair, right, a middle game goal uh, at all times, right, try to get the bishop pair, all things being equal, it's an advantage. And, okay, he slides over to the semi-open file. But you know what? Um, I have to say he's in big trouble now. Because, here's the thing, uh, the bishop is defended by the knight. This knight, now, on the other hand, where can it go? Yeah, what did he do? He moved the rook. Um, the knight can't move here, here, or here, defended by the bishop. So he needed to do something fast to save a piece. You see, the knight is an attacker, and attacking pieces can always decide when they're going to pull the trigger, and then your opponent loses the tempo when he has to recapture. So you already have the momentum, right? The little bit of an initiative there. And then you have to see that when you're being vulnerable to power move number five, right? Little guys harassing 
big guys. Uh, so we have pawn here. So um, I think it's already too late for him. Maybe he could push g5. But let's see what happens here. Yeah, he moves his rook. Um, you know, even the knight here is an undefended knight, right? Power move number three. So he moves the rook, and now, you know, probably still he should go for g5. But he moves um, knight to d6. And now pieces are overworked. Pieces are attacked. X-ray here on the knight. Knight takes. Knight takes. And bishop takes. And game over. I'm up a piece attacking the rook. He doesn't have compensation. That's how quickly you can get into trouble when you don't see the features that are already in the position, right? An attacked piece, the potential for a little guys harassing big guys, and then you just lose to tactics. Okay, I'll just show you the rest of the game quickly here. He moves this rook, attacks my pawn, and I just want to open the position. I have my bishop here. It needs to get functional. And then a matter of technique, right? All else being equal if I don't make mistakes. Take, take, slide over, and just try to liquidate now. Your goal is to, as always, you know, uh, win material, create threats, counter his threats, get a passed pawn, become a queen, game over. Text my bishop. I take, he takes, I take, he takes, I get a passed pawn. Mission accomplished, phase three, four, whatever phase it is. And I go for a little pawn shred that probably, I don't know, I think I see the light square for the bishop here, for the mating square, but probably wasn't necessary. Bishop takes pawn, rook takes, I mean, yeah. Okay, this is just, yeah, there's nothing anybody can do here. All right, check, and game over. His troubles could have been avoided if he had looked for potential power moves. It was in this case power move number five. And then you prepare to defend, and you get out of your trouble, and then you can go back on the attack. Okay, I hope you got something out of this. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Leave a comment below. And in the next video, I'm going to look at games played against C players, which is 1400 to 1600 rating level. See you then. Bye.